the shame brought upon the entire country by a few bad men from our military's special forces is a brutal truth Australians now have no choice but to handle. On Thursday, the findings of a four-year-long Defence Force inquiry into the war in Afghanistan were released. The report detailed shocking crimes, including murders allegedly committed by men who were supposed to be our best-trained, most elite soldiers. What's staggering is the scale of the wrongdoing. 39 potentially unlawful deaths, including Afghan civilians and children. Nick McKenzie has been at the forefront of the reporting of this story for three years and tonight asks how far up the chain of command should responsibility for this disaster rest. When the rumours were first raised with me late in 2015, I had the sense that there was something here. But I never expected to read some of the material uh, that I have reviewed over the last two weeks. When the long-awaited report into war crimes in Afghanistan was finally made public this week, the detail was far worse than even the Chief of the Defence Force was anticipating. The unlawful killing of civilians and prisoners is never acceptable. There's no doubt it's a terrible stain on our nation's history. But the report is also validation for the brave men and women who fought for years to bring this dark chapter to light. We did some great work. We were actively seeking bad people and we wanted to stop the things that they were doing. There was collateral damage with that and there were certainly things that we, the line, that we, we, we stepped over a line. What was described to me in some circumstances is that there was a killing for sport mentality. The responsibility now falls to the top brass of our Defence Force to fix the mess. On Thursday, Chief of Army Rick Burr confronted SAS soldiers at their barracks in Perth and said some soldiers would be stripped of their honours and others reassigned. Lieutenant General Burr now has an almighty job ahead of him. General Burr, how does it feel to know that some of your men have shamed the military and shamed the nation? This is very tough uh, for many, many people. Uh, the news that we heard from uh, the Inspector General's uh, report uh, was truly shocking. Uh, and as the Chief of the Army, uh, I'm determined to hold ourselves to account, to lead through this and build uh, a culture in our army and win back the trust of the Australian people that we know that we deserve. Around 25 men involved in allegedly up to 39 murders of Afghan prisoners and civilians one of the worst scandals in military history. How can the Australian public be assured this is just a few bad eggs? I'm here at the SAS Regiment. Uh, I was here uh, with the regiment for the release of those findings. Uh, it was uh, a very sombre uh, occasion uh, as I delivered the news to them personally uh, and made the very uh, decisive uh, action of uh, removing two SAS squadron from the order of battle, uh, both as a uh, practical but also very real statement of how serious this is. As we hold ourselves to account and we now act on the findings which we welcome, uh, we can formally uh, continue the journey that we've already been on since 2015 to strengthen our army, to strengthen the culture, the leadership and the accountability of our organisation to win back that trust. You talk about accountability. In 2008, you were a very high-ranking officer in Afghanistan. Did you hear any whispers from partner forces, from Afghans on the ground, from anyone under or in your command of war crimes? Uh, I heard nothing of uh, these allegations. If I had have, uh, I absolutely uh, would have reported them. Uh, this, uh, this is shocking uh, now uh, that uh, as we look back over our history, many commanders at many levels are asking how did this happen. Lots of Australians, lots of diggers are incredulous at the suggestion in the report and what you've just made now that officers did not know. The inquiry report makes very clear uh, the efforts that uh, individuals went to to uh, conceive, uh, conduct and conceal uh, these uh, alleged unlawful acts. Isn't it the job of officers 
to know what's going on the ground? And, and if our leaders didn't know, what does that say about their leadership? Leaders at every level uh, are asking themselves these very questions. To now discover that they were lied to, that the truth was withheld from uh, their own uh, commanders, it is truly uh, devastating. It is morally destructive that this behaviour went on in our own organisation. General, our Defence Minister herself, a former military officer, has described feeling sick upon reading the report. How did you feel? I was sick. I was sickened particularly by the allegations of blooding. I was shocked by the extent of the alleged uh, unlawful acts uh, that were described in the report. Uh, that is absolutely not what I expect of anyone in our army, anywhere in our army at any time, and why I'm so determined to lead our army through this into a better place. Uh, ben Robert Smith VC has described in a public statement the Burton inquiry as being concerned with only rumours. Is there truth to that? Is the report really a, a mismatch of rumours or is there much more to it? Uh, the Inspector General has uh, made his findings very clear. He uh, speaks to credible information uh, across a range of issues and, uh, and uh, they are uh, alleged uh, and uh, there is now a process to be followed and uh, to the Office of the Special Investigator uh, that is now uh, out of my hands as the Chief of the Army. The, the suggestion though that this is rumours, that's rubbish now isn't it? Well we're acting on the findings of the report uh, and, uh, and that is why this, uh, this report is so important. We asked for this inquiry, uh, we've waited four and a half years for it, uh, we welcome its findings so that we can now act on it. I had a beer last night with SAS medic Dusty Miller. He served his country once bravely in Afghanistan, served it again by speaking up and out about alleged war crimes. He's landed in a psych ward more than once. What do you say to the whistleblowers, the men like Dusty Miller, who've risked all to speak up? Uh, I thank Dusty and I thank all like Dusty who have come forward. He's taken tremendous courage to do that. Uh, I know there is a lot of hurt uh, and a lot of pain that has been endured by, by many uh, for a long period of time. Uh, their contribution to the inquiry has helped us get to here so that we can hold ourselves to account, so that we can act on the findings in this report and we can begin uh, the opportunity to move forward. The chair of the Australian War Memorial billionaire Kerry Stokes has made it clear he will fund the defences of those accused of shocking alleged war crimes. Can he do that while remaining the chair of the War Memorial? I'm not going to comment on that. That is a matter for, uh, for others. Uh, I'm focused on leading our army uh, through this very difficult period to ensure that we come out a better, uh, more capable army. Respectfully, General Burr, you sit on the board of the War Memorial alongside the chair, Mr Stokes. Will you remain in, as a director if he remains as a chair while also funding and backing those who are accused of tainting our war history, of lying about our war history? Uh, the three service chiefs uh, are all uh, invited members on the board uh, and uh, I'll continue to do that uh, whilst it's a, uh, that is the arrangement that the board puts in place. It's a conflict though, isn't it? Squarely, one can't be chair and also seek to back those who are undermining the very history the War Memorial is trying to record accurately. Nick, I'm not going to uh, comment on that. General Burr, what would you say to the Afghan families who've lost loved ones? Uh, I uh, support uh, the CDF's message uh, in his address. Very heartfelt, very sincere uh, apology to the people of Afghanistan uh, for uh, what has occurred here uh, for their loss. Uh, and indeed uh, for uh, all Australians to say sorry uh, for what's happened here. The Defence has promised compensation to those families. Uh, you've just said sorry. Words and money are a step in the right direction, but they don't bring back the dead. What do you think justice looks like for those Afghan families? Uh, again, I'll just support the CDS comments on this. There is a process that needs to be followed uh, and we will follow that. How long will it take for the army to come through this? The whole army uh, is focused on this issue. Uh, there is uh, 
a lot that we need to digest. Uh, we'll obviously use this as a case study as we continue to focus on strengthening the fundamentals of our army, uh, in particular, again, around uh, culture and leadership and ethical behaviour, and uh, uh, reinforce our focus on good soldiering, which is all about teams, all about individuals of strong character operating uh, within the law, operating with uh, our values and professional standards at the forefront of everything that we do, whatever we do, wherever we are. General Burr, thank you for your time. Thank you. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.